Uh, good evening and welcome to tonight's debate. Uh, first of all, we'd like to start off with a few of the ground rules for the evening for the uh, audience. We do not want to drown out any of the candidates as they answer questions, so please be courteous and don't interrupt the candidates when they are speaking or responding to questions. Keep applause to a minimum after a candidate has responded to a question. We don't want to cut into the time allocated for the debate or reduce the number of questions that can be asked on any particular issue. Once the debate has started, we will ask the audience to stay inside the theater and not come and go. Uh, there are no questions from the floor. Panelists will pose the questions based on their journalistic research. Finally, anyone causing a, a disruption or interrupting the candidates will be removed and escorted from the auditorium. Thank you for attending this evening, and we hope that this is going to be a very informative evening. I am George Daly. I'm the Vice Principal of Bathurst High School, a political science teacher, and I will be your moderator this evening. We are here at Bathurst High School, which opened in 1926. It was, has graduated thousands of students who have gone on to the highest levels of success that one could wish. Twenty years ago, BHS had a population nearing 1,200 students from grades 10 to 12. Today, our population of classes of students from grades 9 to 12 nears 580. We are symptomatic of what is happening in our entire re uh, riding. Some of the focus this evening is on youth and how topics affect them. Questions were prepared by four of uh, our students, and they are here this evening to answer them, and they will have the opportunity here at the mic to pose those questions to our candidates. Hopefully this debate will give you uh, some good information on which you can make your choice and cast your vote on Monday, October 19th, to elect the next member of parliament for Acadie Bathurst. The order of candidates has been determined by draw prior to coming to the stage. Uh, I would like to recognize them in the order in which they will start speaking momentarily. Immediately uh, is Jason Gooden, the candidate for the Democratic Party. After him is Serge Cormier, candidate for the Liberal Party. Following Dominic Bro, candidate for the Green Party. And finally, candidate for the Conservative Party, Reba Reardon. Also here on my right, we have some panelists this evening. Jennifer Bishop will be asking several questions on behalf of the Northern Light. And we also have uh, the first student from BHS that will pose a question is David McDonald. So I will ask the candidates now, you will have 30 seconds in order of the draw, starting with Mr. Gooden to introduce yourself. The floor is yours. Thanks, George. I'm Jason Gooden. I'm your NDP candidate for Acadie Bathurst. In my very first mandate as mayor of Maisonette, I generated over a million dollars in new investment, opened a new health clinic, a community gym, and a park for kids. And these are the types of results I want to get for Acadie Batters if I'm elected on October 19. Only Tom Mulcair and the NDP have the leadership and the experience to get the job done. So on October 19, vote NDP to replace Stephen Harper and get the change we finally need in Ottawa. Thank you. Mr. Cormier. Dear citizens of Acadie Batters, good evening. My name is Serge Cormier, I'm 39 years old. Tonight, I will demonstrate that the Liberal Party of Canada is the only party that offers a credible plan for Acadie Batters. We will create jobs with major investment, grow the middle class by raising taxes on the wealthiest 1% and cutting taxes for middle class Canadians, and help those working hard to join the middle class by providing more money to help families. Mr. Bro. Hi, the Green Party is the only party for real change. The Green Party is ahead of the other on matters of economic, social, justice, and health. We will create sustainable jobs in green energy and green efficiency. We will give all our young people the chance to get educated without going deep into debt. We will do what it takes to make our senior senior citizen life in dignity. Mrs. Reardon. I'm Reba Girard Riordan, your conservative candidate in Acadie Bathurst. I was born in Shaila, and now I live with my husband, Patrick, on our family farm in Poksha. I taught for over 33 years in many schools, including Belgium and Bathurst High. Since retiring, I have been deeply involved in community work in my area. 
I want to create jobs for our exile workers, a better environment, improve in our infrastructure, ensure better health and senior care, and eliminate the UI waiting period. Thank you. Thank you. As we go forward, the rules of the debate are as follows. Questions will be posed and candidates will have 60 seconds each to respond to the particular question. After each candidate has responded, there will be a two-minute open debate amongst the candidates. I would ask you to pay particular close attention to the timers and please stick within them. Uh, the order of speaking is as we start it with the opening statements. The first question will be directed at Mr. Godin and at the next question, Mr. Cormier and so forth as we go through with the evening. So I would now ask uh, BHS student David McDonald to pose your first question to the candidates. Good evening, I'm David McDonald. I'm a grade 12 student here at Bathurst High School and the topic of my question is health care. The Canadian Teachers Federation website indicates that currently in Canada, only one out of every five children who need mental health services are able to acquire them. This is clearly an issue in our area too. While education is a responsibility of the provincial governments, mental health is the responsibility of the federal government. What is your party's plan to deal with the growing mental health crisis in our country and schools? How can you make a difference to services provided to the youth of Acadie Bathurst? Thanks, uh, David, for uh, this interesting question. I'm quite used with this topic because I spent a lot of time during the, the beginning of the campaign to visit some uh, mental health uh, care uh, uh, services provider uh, here in Acadie Batters and our platform of the NDP to, uh, to help the mental health innovation uh, for you in Acadie Batters. Uh, we will establish a four-year fund of $100 million. It's going to be named the Mental Health Innovation Fund for children or uh, and uh, youth, which will contribute uh, about $15 million annually for impl implanting best practice that reduce waiting time and provide appropriate care, and another $10 million annually for research and sharing information among health care providers. Thank you, Mr. Gooden. Mr. Cormier? Well, actually, the Liberal Party of Canada will start by negotiating a new health accord with the provinces because we know that the province of New Brunswick is a province that uh, deserves better health services. And with the accord that the Harper government wants to uh, put in place, it will penalize a province like New Brunswick where the uh, population is uh, older and where uh, the population is decreasing. So we will negotiate a new health accord accord with the provinces that will reflect the reality of New Brunswick. On top of that, we will make an, um, an investment of $3 billion more over the next four years to prioritize home care services for all Canadians. And we will also improve and reduce the cost of prescription drug uh, for Canadians so that they will be able to pay less for the medic their medication and this will benefit all Canadians and Canadians. And on top of that, we will increase the availability of high-quality mental health services. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cormier. Mr. Bro. Yes, I think uh, one of the main things uh, about uh, the health care is the, the fact that the government didn't sit with the provinces and uh, to have that, it's, it's been a long time since they've been sitting together to get that problem uh, work with. And uh, the Green Party will be sure to, uh, to make sure that uh, the government sits together and get uh, that problem uh, resolved. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Bro. Mrs. Rudin? Okay, for me, uh, hospital and emergencies is very important to preserve and improve our health care. And I would try to keep those hospitals, like in Karakat, or tragedy open and give more to the Bathurst Hospital. Also, I would think of generic medication for uh, people that would be cheaper and more aff uh, affordable for the less fortunate. And when I answer this question, I just think of these last three couple of days about the TPP, which would have something to do with uh, uh, medication coming from other countries. Thank you, Mrs. Reardon. Before we uh, open for the two-minute debate, I'd just like to bring the candidates back to, I think, the, the key point of this particular question is one in every five children cannot acquire mental health services. 
and, and I'm wondering if we could focus in on that uh, since that's where the, the students came with the question. I open the floor. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed uh, about how much uh, other candidates just didn't answer the question correctly. Nearly 1.5 million Canadians under uh, the age of 25, 24 uh, suffer from mental health uh, problem. So this is a huge problem for a society like Canada and we have to address it. And the NDP have a plan, a national-wide strategy that involves an investment of $100 million in four years to help those young people to, uh, to be treated and to develop themselves and by after, after that contribute to the society. Well, actually, I think I just I answered the question by saying that we will uh, increase uh, the availability, availability of high uh, quality mental services. And I'm just, you know, a little bit wondering about how the MDP is going to do that because in uh, Canadian press on August 27, the leader Tom Mulcair said that he's, he has to back away from his pledge to restore, restore the 36 billion in provincial health care transfer to the pro to the province. So how are they going to do that? Uh, uh, you know, uh, making more uh, health care services to younger people if they are, if they're going to cut. Uh, uh, the L payment transfer to the provinces. I'm not sure you will be able to do that. I, I, I think you will not be able to do that. The Liberal Party w want to invest three billion more to prioritize and improve L care services, and we will do. We will do it. This is how we think the Canadian deserve better services, but is by investing in health care. Now you are off topic. We're not talking about the transfer to the province. We're talking about the federal exercise. Exercising a leadership about this matters. It's, it's a huge problem in our society. I, I, I just said that we will increase the availability of high quality mental health services. So that touch that is touching the young people in this province. Yeah, so that is what we're going to do. Problem. Well, actually, you know, you want to cut, specific you, you problem. cut, you want to cut the health transfer to the province. You want to cut the health transfer. No. Uh, yeah, Thanks. you want to cut you it. No, that's, that's, a yeah. that's a lie. Thank, Thank no. you, gentlemen. We'll cut you off. Uh, I hope this continues. It was uh, engaging. Uh, question number two, we'll go to uh, Jennifer Bishop of the Northern Light, and the first respondent will be Mr. Cormier, and we will go in order from Mr. Cormier's left after that. Thank you, Jennifer. The economy in this region has been struggling for some time. Uh, what would you do differently to turn the economy around in Acadie Bathurst? Well, thank you for the question. And our plan is focused on growing the economy and by doing major investment in infrastructure. Uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put $60 billion more in infrastructure to rebuild our economy here in Acadie Bathurst. We need this money to rebuild our roads, our ports, our airport. Just take an example like every other region in Acadie Bathurst, every or, or, uh, other riding in Acadie Bathurst receive major finance, um, financing, uh, financial investment in the last couple of years. Just look at the port of St. John, they received $68 million at the port of St. John. Can you imagine what we can, we can do here at the port of Beldoon with that kind of money? like roads, like airports in, uh, here in Bathurst, the Bathurst Airport that has a project on the table for the last 10 years. We have to invest in this kind of project and the Liberal Party will do that by investing in our infrastructure, something that we create a good job, good paying job, and that will rebuild our economy. Thank you, Mr. Cormier. Mr. Bro. Yes, I think the, we all know that the big company will not come in Acadie Bathurst and we have to put our force in our uh, in the small business. Small business uh, create more job than, uh, than any, anywhere else in, in Canada. But we have to make sure that they have the, they have the, the, the tools to do so. Uh, it's, it's okay to create a, a, a billion dollars in investment in infrastructure, but we need to unleash an army of carpenters and electricians and contractors to improve our energy e efficiency in, in the building. We have school, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, hospital that losing energy, so we have to get involved in that kind of, uh, of, of job. Thank you, Ms. Bro. Mrs. Redden? Okay, I don't want to talk about St. John or other places in the country. I want to talk about Acadie Bathers. I want to work with the communities to try to find what they have to offer, what they have to showcase, what they would be proud of, what ideas that they could come up with and try to get money from the federal 
and maybe be on the good side of the government to bring something to Acadie Bathers. It could be small and medium businesses and maybe subsidize uh, receive that would remain in a region. Thank you, Mrs. Reardon. Mr. Goudin. Thanks, uh, George. I think the keys of the economic development and the economic growing of the region uh, passed by the uh, small and medium businesses. Small and medium businesses are responsible for more than 80% of the employment around Canada. And it's the same here for Acadie Batters. In the past uh, few uh, weeks, I had the chance to visit so many of them and they are the art of the economic development, so we must help them to develop themselves by giving them the tools and, uh, of course, the money they need to develop. Uh, for an example, we, the NDP, uh, want to uh, lower their tax rate from 11 to 9 percent to, uh, to give them the, uh, the, all the money they need to develop themselves to create jobs. And as well, the NDP has have a good infrastructure plan, a responsible plan that's going to provide to municipalities uh, long, previsible and uh, stable uh, funding to, uh, to rebuild our economies and uh, create jobs around that, of course. Thank you. Uh, we'll open the floor here for, uh, for two minutes. Uh, I'm wondering if you can focus specifically on, uh, perhaps on your vision of the economy for Acadie Bathurst. Uh, where do you see it going? I mean, we've, we, you've all touched on it somewhat, uh, but I think that would be a fair thing to know, you know where do you see this going in the future? Uh, Floors open. Yeah, sure. My vision for Acadie Batters, of course, uh, as Mr. Cormier said, yeah, we have some here is some basic infrastructure to uh, to have a growing economy, or airport, or rail track, or port, uh, or road. So these are the uh, the place where do we need investment to uh, grow the economy, because Acadie Batters can become a hub for importation or exportation for the Canada Atlantic. They just need a little more money to, uh, to, to uh, grow a little and uh, help the place to thrive. And those infrastructure that we have here in Acadie Batters can just become the, the keys of the, uh, of the fact of being attractive for, for small, medium, and maybe large businesses to come here in Acadie Batters. Because when you have everything you need around to do importation and exportation, you become an attractive place to install in, uh, new businesses. How will you do that? You don't have any plan to grow the economy. We are the only party to have a plan that's going to grow the economy. We're going to invest in our infrastructure. Can you tell the people of Acadie Batters why they have waited so long for the airport of Batters, you know, to have their it project? Because it no, were no program no, listen, at listen. the... We have, a, no, we have, a, we have an, a, a big, big, big investment that we're going to put in our infrastructure, $60 billion more that will help our airport, ports, our uh, roads that will grow our economy uh, create good paying job you don't have that you want to balance the budget don't tell it don't tell yeah we India. want to balance the budget yeah. whoa there's a few things there that i have no, no, to correct you, you, you want to balance the budget i so will but balancing the budget by cutting the all the all the fiscal gifts that you gave to big corporation okay That's so you're shameful. telling so you're telling so you're telling the people that uh, by cutting the taxes we're going to lose probably uh, more we'll 150,000 absolutely oh, not yes. that's a lie that's a lie maybe we'll let mrs Reed just jump in yes sir yes sir we yeah. are the only party with a real plan to grow our we are the only here. party who's going to lower economy. the credit yeah. card of the canada and because this my generation have, is going to have to pay for the for all the bad decisions that you're about to take that's the problem mrs Reed, mrs Reed, you had a comment to make maybe just 15 seconds because you couldn't get in yeah this debate is uh okay I'm thinking of Bathurst Airport. Okay, I'm thinking of the Acadie Bathurst. What can we do to have? And yes, NDP were there before. And Liberal, you are throwing money, money, money. Investing. I don't know where it's going to come from. Investing. Maybe for the uh, our generation no. to pay for Investing. it. Okay, thank you, thank you. We, we're, uh, we'll move on. It's, it's certainly getting more lively. I'd engage the uh, four candidates to, uh, to jump in when we open up for two minutes. We'll uh, go to our next question uh, from a student, again, from Bathurst High School, Brittany Gray. Floor is yours, Brittany. Good evening. I'm Brittany Gray. My topic is the environment. Global warming continues to be an issue worldwide. Storms such as this week in South Cal Carolina used to be called storms of the century, but now are not being considered storms of the decade. In essence, the regularity and severity of the storms continue to worsen. Environment Canada has indicated that the coastline of Acadie Bathurst is one of the areas that is the most threatened. What is your party's plan to deal with global warming? What is your plan on how to deal with the potential land loss and future flooding that will arise in the low-laying areas of our riding? 
Mr. Bro, the yours to begin. Well, I, <clears throat> I think the, the Green Party is, uh, has uh, the, the, the mission of doing that. Uh, we didn't hear about the other parties uh, of uh, environmental issues before. Uh, just being in the, in the House of Commons now is, is, is one thing. Uh, we need to enforce an important bold climate action. Uh, the environmental defense release a comparison of federal parties' climate change policies. The Green Party co plans call for a virtual elimination of fossil fuel in Canada by mid-century, and uh, it's we have to make sure that we are doing something now. We have been waiting for too long with these issues, and now we are running against the time. It's time that the, all the government, and it's not uh, what we just seen there, uh, yelling at each other. We have to work together to get this thing going. Mrs. Redden? I cannot answer that question. I'm sorry, because I didn't hear quite well what would, would, it was. So would, you like me to, would you like me to read it again to the candidates to hear it clear better? That would be appropriate. Okay. Global warming continues to be an issue worldwide. Storms such as this week in South Carolina used to be called storms of the century, but now are being considered storms of the decade. In essence, the regularity and severity of storms continue to worsen. Environment Canada has indicated that the coastline of Acadie Bathurst is one of the areas the most threatened. What is your party's plan to deal with global warming? What is your plan on how to deal with potential land loss and future flooding that will arise in the low-lying areas of our riding? Okay, <coughs> that's a big question. I will try to answer the best that I can. Um, when I think of global warming, I keep thinking if we had something in education that could teach children about what's happening. We have seen in the last couple of weeks or couple of winters what it's doing. Um, my government, I'm sure, would uh, agree that we need help in that line to maybe put programs in schools. Uh, do something in my riding in Acadie Bathurst if I go there and try to say I want something to prevent that. Thank you, Mrs. Drin. Mr. Goodan. Thanks. I'm sorry, Reba, but I don't think your government understands that issue because you have the worst environmental records uh, ever. And about climate change, um, I'm quite used with that file because, you know, as mayor of the village of Maisonette, Serge, you probably know that, that we have some erosion problem uh, in the place. And you know what? My chief, uh, my leader, Tom Mulcair, is, uh, was a cabinet minister in the government of Quebec. He was an environment minister and he didn't just talk about climate change. He lowered the emission each and every year in the provinces of uh, Quebec. The, uh, Tom McCarran, the NDP, will establish a national water strategy in collaboration with province, territory, municipality, and forest nation. Uh, we will um, also we will reduce Canada's reliance on fossil fuel, uh, support e energy efficiency and conservation. We'll implant a cap and trade system that puts a price on carbon to ensure meaningful, meaningful emission reducing. Thank you, Mr. Godin. Mr. Cormier? Well, I think uh, it will be the only time probably tonight that I will agree with uh, the NDP candidate about the ARPA record on environment. So uh, this is the ARPA government does not have a good record at all on environment. We, the Liberal government, think that uh, we have to act right now and taking actions on, on climate change. And uh, regarding the question, I really think that we have to sit down with uh, our community and municipality here in Acadie to make sure we have a plan going forward uh, when such uh, uh, disaster like that uh, happen, and let's uh, try to put in place uh, an, emergen uh, an emergency uh, measure center that we uh, can take action and that we can uh, certainly uh, look at what, when things like that happen that we are prepared and when uh, a storm like that happen that our population is safe. So we will take action on climate change and we will support uh, the environment uh, here in the riding. Thank you, Mr. Cormier. I'll open the floor for uh, two minutes. <laughs> That's well, funny. All right. Well, actually, I think uh, the question was regarding actually like if like storm happened, a big storm happened. And like I said, I think we really have to work with our municipality 
community to make sure that we have a plan and strategy going forward if things like that happen again. We uh, know that there's a, a bigger storm uh, years after years after year, and I think we have to take action. We also gone uh, uh, phased out the fossil fuel subside, and we will make sure to invest in a cleaner technology. Uh, make sure that uh, scientists and environmentalists are uh, at the table with uh, politicians, but we also the municipality just to make sure that we uh, take care of those climate change uh, for our future generation. Another problem about this issue specifically is the fact that uh, uh, Stephen Harper and the Conservative has misled and fired lots of scientists uh, from the government. So of course to have an objective point of view about these issues it's, it's become harder and harder for, uh, for us because you know if our scientists can't even talk and tell us what's the, the real, what's the facts, uh, it's a qu uh, quite a problem. That's why the NDP want to create a, a parliamentary director of the science to provide to, uh, to members of parliament uh, some good and accurate information about uh, in that case about environmental well, issues. It's funny, it's funny you said that because your, that. your leader when he is in Alberta is taking on one side of his mouth and it comes to you know pipeline mm -hmm. and things like that and when he is in Quebec he's saying oh well no we're not going to do it. So he's no, always that's doing that. Absolutely so you're false. Not, that's not, absolutely no, false. No, that's did, you, you did the spin no, cycle no, and no, see no, on the side of the website of CBC. I think you can agree to that. I think you can agree to that. Talk about climate change and still pushing the energy S and and all those all those things. Yeah. Your leader is taking and how many money are you going to put yeah. in? Yeah. Your leader is taking Thank you. We'll, uh, yeah. one, we'll, we'll, close, we'll yeah. close that particular debate. Uh, certainly certainly appreciate, appreciate the vigor that kicked in at the end. Uh, just to give you knowledge of, of what things are like in the riding, uh, the building that you're in today is built on top of bark that has sunk over probably six to eight feet in the last 15 years. And the last time I, I looked, wood floats. So the, the potential in the riding is significant for major damage. So I'll leave it at that, and I'll, I'll go back to uh, Jennifer for the next question. Okay, so when we were discussing the economy, uh, there was lots of mention about the Bathurst Regional Airport and the Port of Belgdune. Um, how would you help attract more federal funding to projects in Activity Bathurst, such as the Bathurst Regional Airport, which has been waiting for funding for quite some time now? Mrs. Reardon, it is yours. To be on the good side of the government. If you were, if I was, and I knew there was a need for the airport or the Port of Belgium that they want to expand, this is where, as a uh, representative of the Acadie Bathers, that I would go to the Prime Minister and say there is a need and can we have money to support the airport and the Port of Belgium. Thank you, Mr. Zuri. Mr. Goodin. Sorry, Rebo, let me correct you about the fact of being on the side of the power. Uh, you know, Madawasco Restigouche was on the side of the power with Bernard Valco, which were the minister of the uh, ACOA, and uh, they have an airport in Charlotte. Did they receive any money in the past 10 years? Not a cent. Okay? So it's not, it's, it's not about being on the side of power or not, it's about being a government that makes responsive choice, being a government who invests in good place, and NDP government has a plan for investing in, uh, in uh, infrastructure as uh, the airport of Batters, as uh, the uh, port of Baldoon. When uh, Tom Mulcair came over about two months ago here in Acadie Batters, I, uh, the first stop we did was at the port of Baldoon to let him uh, see what's the, uh, the potential of the place. He flew by the uh, Batters airport. He knew what's the situation. He didn't know that after you pass the security in the Batters airport, you cannot use the washroom. That's a problem and we're going to fix it. Thank you, Mr. Gouda. Mr. Cormier? I'm going to tell you something right now. I've been 10 years in politics, working at the provincial government, and I know that project full well. We will make sure that the Batters Airport project that has been on the table for many, many years will be uh, one that will be done uh, if we took power. I'm going to tell you something about the Batters Airport. This airport near, needs major investment. And when you talk about investment, we have to go get this investment. And I have the knowledge, and I know the provincial federal funding program, and also uh, uh, the people at the Belarus Airport. I know what they want. They want to extend the runway. They want to modernize the terminal. And look, Moncton received millions of dollars from the federal government. 
and we can go get this invest investment to modernize the Valleros Airport. I know where to get this investment. I will go get this investment. I was at the Chamber of Commerce last week, and I told them that this is, one, this is my first priority for the riding, and this will be done. Thank you, Mr. Clement. <laughs> Mr. Bro? It's okay, it's okay to, uh, to want to have the investment, but we have, you, you have to have the, the, the project to, 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 uh, to have the government to, to uh, give you the money. Uh, if, if, you just, if you just talk about the, the, uh, the port of Belgium, it's not the Terminal Chaleur uh, project that will help us do something good for Acadie Matters. It's, it's a dangerous and it's a, it's a project that will, will maybe bring some investment, but not the good investment because we, we're about to lose, uh, we'll lose uh, fisheries and uh, tourism just to have 30 or 40 jobs, we have to have some decent project and, now, and after that the government will, will open his eyes and see that we need, we need to have some investment in Acadie Batters. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Uh, I'm going to open the floor in a second for two minutes. One of the things I find we struggle with in Acadie Bathurst is the communities working together for a common economic focus. We get lost sometimes within our own small areas without the grand vision. And I'm wondering, as, as you, as, if you were elected going forward, what can you do to, to bring everyone together for that economic focus for the betterment of us all? So two minutes, have at it. Each community in Acadie Bathurst, each municipality, as their priority and their needs. That's why we have to sit with them and I had the chance to meet with almost all of them. All of them that I meet and they give me all their priority and all the needs that, that they need in Akali Batur. So each community in the riding is different. Uh, they need something different in terms of priority. But what we have to do is to sit with them and listen to them. And our infrastructure plan will well received by them by them, this is what they want because the infrastructure is so old here in the riding. We have to invest, invest in our infrastructure that's going to create jobs, that's going to create well, uh, good paying jobs, and then going to put people at work. So that's it, that this is what we need to do. Sit with the community, sit with the municipality and make sure that their needs and priority are taken care of. And they have to sit together too. Yeah, they have to sit together. Of course, we have to sit with municipality. I'm, uh, I'm a mayor, of course. I know how it works in the municipality. And you know, what we really need is a long and stable and predictable funding. Not a huge amount of money that's going to appear uh, for three years and after that we're just going to be in austerity because uh, we're not going to be able to balance the budget in four years because we're going to put so a massive debt on, the, on our shoulders that we cannot uh, move. I and will, the I, difference I, between... I, the, you, I, you know, I'm able, very, very I, glad I, I will, that, I will uh, be able to plan if you don't have any plan for them. You don't have any plan have for them. No, yeah. we don't have. You yeah. don't want to cut the what? budget and balance the budget. You don't yeah, have any we plan. Go. Oh, of course. All the municipality plan. tell us at the municipality, Francophone Municipality Association that I went to, uh, they said that this is what it. you need to do. You need to invest in our infrastructure. This yeah. is what we need. In we long have, we term, don't have any plan. You want term. to cut and balance the budget? That's what you want to no, do. Absolutely no, absolutely not. No, no, we're no, gonna no. get. We're no, gonna bring no. the money by higher the little more the, I'm the, sorry, the, but the big corporation the tax. Yeah, you're gonna cut jobs. You're gonna cut jobs. 150,000 jobs and more if you. You if gave you cut some them fiscal the gift to no, big corporations. No. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Reardon. We, uh, we're gonna go to our next question. I, I think you may be able to get a chance to come back to this particular debate here in a moment. Uh, Alex, if you, uh, Alex Fullerton. Good evening. My name is Alex Fullerton. I'm a grade 12 student here at Bathurst High School, and the topic of my question is economic growth and job creation. The province of New Brunswick is the second oldest population jurisdiction in North America, trailing only Florida. According to Stats Canada, Akadzi Bathurst is actually the oldest population in New Brunswick, with 62% of the population over the age of 40. It is clear that the youth are choosing, or are being forced, to move elsewhere to find decent employment. What is your economic vision for Northern New Brunswick? How can you make a difference? What can you and your party do to grow the economy and bring youth back to northeastern New Brunswick? Thank you, Mr. Goodall. It's your turn to start. Ooh. Oh, me? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, sorry. yes, yes. yes. Uh, thanks for the question. Yes, of course, it's a, uh, it's a problem, the, the fact that the population is getting old. Um, the NDP have a plan, specif uh, plan specifically 
for uh, apprenticeship, you know, when, uh, when uh, students are finished uh, the NBCC or things like that, they have to make some hours to do what we call blocks, to have a red seal, or, uh, you know, and it's quite hard for them to find a place to do their apprenticeship and do the, the hours they need to, uh, to become a professional of their uh, job. So we have a plan to invest $100 million in uh, four years to, uh, in uh, subsidies to uh, businesses to help them to, to uh, hire more students and you know, uh, there's a fact that uh, if a student can do a, a stage, uh, stage in the region, he's probably going to stay in the region after that because he want to be uh, motivated by the fact that he have a life quality of staying here. So we have a plan for that. Thank you, Mr. Godin. Mr. Cormier? Thank you for the question. We have a good, good, good strategy to uh, have the young people back here in this province. First of all, we want to create 40,000 young jobs each year for the next three years, okay? This is significant amount of job, uh, and this will be done uh, uh, with our youth employment strategy. And the NDP candidate was saying 100 million. Well, let me tell you that a liberal government will invest 1.3 billion dollar over the next uh, uh, three years. This is 13 times more than the NDP. We will create 500 new green jobs also for uh, youth in the province, hiring more guide also in our provincial uh, national park. And on top of that, we will create new co-op placement for science, technology, engineer, mathematics, and business students. You know, like all the technology centers that are built, like in Moncton, in St. John, and in uh, Fredericton, it's time that they are built here. For 18 years, we, mi we are missing those investments, and I will go get this investment if I'm there. And we'll, we will have our young people Thank back you, in Mr. this province. Thank you, Mr. Cormier. It's time, Mr. Bro. Well, I think uh, you just mentioned it, the green energy, uh, renewable energy, we have to invest in that. We have to, to make sure that the, our young people stay here. They have the, 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 the things to, uh, to, to get jobs. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's just a matter of not being in the back. We have to be upfront with those energy. It's, it's, uh, we, we cannot take the chance to, to just sit back and look what the, the others are doing. We have to go in front and get those things going. Uh, we have many, many, many jobs in uh, renewable energy coming up and we have to be there. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Mrs. Redden. I find it extremely sad when I go to the airport and when I see mothers and children crying when they see their father or leaving out west. I firmly believe that federal, provincial, and municipal officers have to stop the blame game and work together with our business community to foster job creation and attract new investment to our region. I would try to uh, work with the federal to decentralize the jobs that are just maybe around Ottawa. Do like something like Miramichi that they bring jobs over here and we must continue to support our fishermen our farmers and small businesses owners they also create jobs for our people just last night i was in caracat and one of the fishermen told me that uh, the ndp and the liberal do not want that tpp so this would help these people thank you uh, we're going to uh, reserve this following debate to one minute, just to uh, try to keep this in our window. One minute debate now instead of two. Okay, so I'll open the floor, candidates. Well, well it's funny that uh, Ms. Raydran is saying about decentralizing a uh, federal job, because like the economy was so bad here in Acadie Batters, so bad, that the ARPA government came by Acadie Batters and went straight to Miramichi and put 550 jobs right there. We will have this federal job here in the Acadie Batters riding. Trudeau sent a letter to Premier Ganon said that we will focus on rural region and I will go get these investments and these jobs here in the riding. You know why? Because the economy is so bad for the past 18 years, 18 years here that we need those kind of jobs. This will uh, bring back the uh, uh, young to come back and uh, I will make sure that we have uh, those kind of federal uh, jobs here in the riding. Can you stop? Uh, 
hitting on head of Ivan Godin. You know, first of all, uh, people here did I'm the demo. I'm people not here did the democratic choice. Whoa, so let me talk. I don't interrupt you when you talk. I don't interrupt you when you talk. Let me talk. Mr. Good, I'm going to have to cut you off because we just have one minute for debates now to try to keep us in. I apologize for that, but we'll try to respect the timelines. I wish we could continue. Ms. Uh, back to uh, Ms. Bishop, another further question. What are some of the social programs that you feel need improvement in regards to the residents in this area, and what would you do to improve those programs? Mr. Carmi, it would be your turn to start. And it was about the social program, right? Yes. Okay. What would well, you do to improve the social programs? Well, I think, like I said, like with our municipality, we have to sit down on the table and make sure that we have a look at what's going on, going on here in the riding in terms of social program. And if you're thinking about the social program for the elders or to, uh, social program regarding the young, young younger generation, I think this is something that we have to sit down all together, make sure that we have a strategy going forward and make significant investment in uh, the uh, social uh, uh, well network, if I can uh, call any writing. And in, uh, regarding social investment, we will invest in affordable, affordable houses uh, for the people that are the most in need. And we will also invest on low income, uh, uh, low income affordable houses also. So I think this will uh, help uh, the social aspect of the riding in Akali Badgers. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Mr. Bro? Uh, yes, uh, it's a, it's, the Green wants to eliminate poverty and challenge the inequity, implanting a guaranteed li uh, livable income, ensuring equal pay for equal job, and ensure high quality child care for every Canadian family who wants it. We will provide a school nutrition program, provide the healthy food and kids in school so that they'll, they'll learn better. Despite the growing of the numbers of two-income household, Canadian families are finding it hard to, and harder to make, make ends meet. Green Party program and policy will reduce income inequity and ensure that all Canadians have the opportunity to prosper. We will phase in a national guaranteed livable live, income to ensure that no person income fail below what it's necessary for health and life and dignity. Thank you, Mr. Bro. Mrs. Reardon? Being a professional home economist, my mission is um, to improve the quality, of the, the quality of life for individual and the families. And Poverty is certainly one of my concern in the area or in Acadie Bathurst. Anything to do with education in school with children could improve uh, any kind of social behavior or uh, to do with mental illness. I really believe in prevention also, that we could create something that would help young people. Thank you, Mrs. Reardon and Mr. Godin. Yes, uh, we are the NDP, so we have a very, very, uh, uh, a lot of place in our platform specific for social program as the $15 a day childcare for Canadian families to, um, to help families to, to get ahead and have a little more in their pocket at the end of the week, because uh, some place, uh, child care can cost uh, uh, almost $2,000 a month, so it's uh, quite expensive. Uh, we also uh, work on providing a universal drug plan for help, uh, specifically seniors, of course, because when you pass uh, 65 years old, you don't necessarily have an, uh, a drug plan with your um, employer, so uh, we will provide that to, uh, to our citizen. Uh, as well as um, as a higher a little more the income supplement the supplement uh, the income supplement warranty uh, to our seniors to help 2,100 seniors to uh, get out of poverty in Canada and all that we're going to pay it by uh, increasing the corporate tax to big corporation because it's incredible all the money that we lose there. Thank you, Mr. Goodham. Uh, again, because of time, we are going to cut the following section to one minute. Candidates, open debate, one minute on the topic. Well, you said about your $15 daycare. Actually, there's four provinces that already said that they will not be part of it because it's too expensive and nobody will see these places uh, uh, in the next uh, uh, probably maybe four, five, six years. So all the provinces, four provinces already said that they will not take part of your daycare, $15 daycare. On top of that, that on top of that, uh, 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 sorry, you're interrupting me. Uh, on top of that, 
on top of that, uh, your $15 minimum wage. I went to Fish Plan yesterday and you went there and told the, uh, the Fish Plan employee that their minimum wage will go up to $15. This is not true. It's a federal minimum wage. Federal minimum wage that only the people who work in federal uh, government, regulated by the federal government, will touch. You went to Fish Plan, Thanks you tell for worker promoting Fish Plan. My platform. You, yes, no, we, you, you, you we went. Gonna, we oh, so you also, also you tell them that the minimum wage will go up to $15? No, That's federal, what you said. No, federal no, jurisdiction. No, well, you went so to Fish Plan and you said that they will go up to $15. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, I will go to our last uh, question, or sorry, our second last question of the evening. Uh, Jennifer Chamberlain, student from Bathurst High School. Hi, my name is Jennifer Chamberlain. I am a grade 12 student at Bathurst High School, and my topic is youth. Quoting the Canadian Federation of Students, Skyrocketing tuition fees and the prevalence of loan-based financial assistance have pushed student debt to historic heights. This past year, almost 425,000 students were forced to borrow in order to finance their education. For more than a decade, students studying in Ontario and the Maritimes have had the highest average debt loads, averaging more than 28,000. A massive student mobilization in 2005 for Jean Charette government to reverse 103 million in cuts to bursary programs. Then, in 2013, massive student mobilization against increases in tuition fees contributed to the defeat of the Charette government in the 2012 provincial elections. Collection action has afforded Quebec both the lowest tuition fees and the lowest levels of student debt of any province at just over 13,000. Our question is, what is your party's plan on dealing with the current student debt crisis in Canada? Will you personally commit tonight to working towards a student debt forgiveness program to any student who chooses to return to Acadie Bathurst? This could be a tool to boost our local economy, population, and help relieve the student debt crisis. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bro, I believe. Well, uh, the Green Party, the National Student, I think we, ha we are the only one that wants to eliminate that fee for students and their family without adequate fin uh, financial means. And to remove that 2% uh, percent cap on tuition fee uh, for First Nation and Inuit students. Abolish the fee of post-secondary uh, education uh, and skill training uh, in Canada by 2020. And we want to have also eliminate the existing, uh, existing uh, uh, federal uh, uh, student uh, federal debt uh, above ten thousand dollars, so they won't have to uh, to uh, to worry about that. Abolish interest on student loan and uh, increase available funding for uh, bursary. Create a national committee. Uh, uh, no, uh, and that's it. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Mrs. Reardon? Uh, to keep our youth in the region, fostering an environment conducive to quality of life environment, encouraging you to stay there. We would relax the eligibility criteria for scholarship to reduce student debt. And, of course, to put in, to give chance to young people to experience the labor market. Thank you, Mrs. Reardon. Mr. Goda. Yes, uh, uh, thanks for the question. I'm quite uh, used with this topic because I, uh, I, I, I just finished a bachelor degree and I know what's the, what's the pressure on the shoulders of students with all the debt. So that's why the NDP uh, is uh, pushing to eliminate the interest on student debt to help them get ahead. Because you know when you finish your bachelor degree or when you finish a course and we have uh, $40,000 uh, uh, that it's a bad start in life. Uh, we would like to create a dedicated fund of two hundred million dollars for apprenticeship uh, for youth, and of course we want to invest uh, two thousand fifty million dollars additional uh, for the federal student grants over four years. So to to uh, give more grants to students and help them to pay their scholarship, and as well, of course, we're going to sit with the province to try to create a national strategy to set this problem. Thank you, Mr. Godin. 
Mr. Carmen. Can you, can you believe that I'm 29 years old and I still have you know, stolen loan to pay? Uh, this is why the Liberal Party will take action regarding uh, student loans. And what we're going to do is we will provide uh, more direct help to students uh, for low and middle income families to help them pay for their education. We will increase the maximum Canada student loan for low income students to $3,000 per year for a full time student and uh, uh, $1,800 per year for a part time student. On top of that, we will make sure that our student loan is more flexible. So we will ensure that no graduate with student loans will be required to make a payment until they are earning more than $25,000 a year. And we will make sure to collaborate with the province, collaborate with the province to make sure that we find a strategy, a plan going forward to make sure that the uh, student can stay in the province and have their loan pay more Thank quickly. Thank you, Mr. Cormier. Uh, in essence of time, we, we have to remove the debate from this section. I certainly wish we could engage more. It's a, it's a very valuable topic to our youth. Uh, we're going to move directly now to closing statements if you need to get something in order. And it is in reverse order of the opening statements. So Mrs. Reardon, you will start with the closing statements. You have a minute and 30 seconds when you're ready. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I am running in this election because I want to represent our workers small business owners, miners, fishermen, farmers, students, families, and our senior. I want to be your member of parliament by listening to your needs and defending your rights, both here and in Ottawa. We have an excellent program aimed to families, seniors, communities, healthcare, job creation, and community infrastructure. On October 19, we have the opportunity to embrace change in Acadie Bathers. Mr. Godin did a great job over the last 18 years, but his name is not on the ballot anymore. It doesn't matter what party wins the election. What is important is that we elect someone who will work hard for you and fight for you, both here and in Ottawa. As my work, and life experience have shown, I am not afraid of working hard and will rise to the challenge of re representing you effectively as your MP. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, Mrs. Reardon. <laughs> Mr. Bro. Do you know what I would like? I would like for my kids never to need for anything. But come to think of it, do you know what I, will, I really want? I want them to have clean air to breathe and clean water to drink. Please take a moment just to think about it. What future do we have if we don't have pure air to breathe and clean water to drink? Not much of one. That's why the Green Party wants to develop an economy, but not at, at cost of everything else. Regarding health, the Green Party will make sure that everybody in Canada has access to everything they need the, to lead a good life and contribute to our society. In matter of social justice, we will do what it takes so that nobody is living in poverty. We will order, uh, we'll, while others are rich and they don't even know what to do with their money. In Acadie Batters, it's con uh, we are considered as a poor riding in a poor province, but we are not po poor. We all need, all we need is a political will, the will to give the tools to become a rich region, rich in collaboration, rich in will to extract, but especially to transform our natural resource. Thank you, Mr. Bro. Dear friends, this federal election is the most important for the riding of Acadibators. After many years of being ignored by Stephen Harper government and 18 years in the opposition, it is time for a change. The Liberal Party of Canada, Justin Trudeau and our team embody the change we need to revive Acadie Batters' economy. This election is about you. And Justin Trudeau and I, we will help your families. We cannot afford to spend another four years in the opposition. Every riding around us have grown their economy and by receiving significant investment from the federal government. Accept us. 
it is time to change that. I want to change that, and I will change that. I know I will because I can count on people like you here in Acadie Batters, people who want change, who want a better future for our riding. I have 10 years of experience in politics and a wide network of contacts with the government. The Liberal Party of Canada, under the leadership of Justin Trudeau, is the only party with a real, real and credible plan to rebuild our economy. So let's do this together. Let's build a better future for the people of Acadie Batters. On October 19, I am asking for your support. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Cornier. <clears throat> Mr. Godin. After 10 years of Stephen Harper's, families in Acadie Batters are working harder than ever, but too many are struggling to get ahead. It's time that the people of Acadie Batters had a federal government that was on their side. For too long, liberals and conservative government have told us to expect less cuts to government services like healthcare, HEHI, less money for road, port, airport, and an economy that doesn't work for everyday Canadians. You deserve better. The NDP commitment to Acadie Batters speaks directly to the unique issue that face this region and the opportunities we have to improve life for everyone who lives here. We have a plan to create jobs, improve health care, help our seniors to live in dignity, and give our young people a fair start in life. It's practical, affordable, and a blueprint for a better life for people like you. You can count on me and my strong NDP team to work for you and your family, not just at, elect uh, at election time, but each and every day, just like Yvonne Godin did in the past 18 years. That's the kind of leadership Acadie Batters deserve, leadership you can trust. As you know, Liberals need over 100 seats to form a government. The NDP only need 35. That's why on October 19, I'm asking you to vote for me and the NDP to replace Stephen Hopper and finally bring the change we need in Ottawa. Thank you, Mr. Godin. That uh, brings to a close our debate this evening. I want to take a moment just to thank the candidates, not only for appearing here in the debate tonight, but also so for running. Uh, most people don't know the commitment that it takes and the family, uh, what your family gives up for you to be here. So certainly thank you for that. Uh, my political science class is every day, 1045 to 1145 at BHS. I'd love to see you there. If you have any uh, further information on further debates, please check out rogerstv.com or electionsnb.ca. Uh, everyone, practice your right. Vote October 19th on Monday. Choose the next government. Thank you. Good night.